Welcome, everybody. This is D.W. Daniel Whited calling you from Denver, Colorado. And we've got Dr. Kurt Fisnick. He's in the Dakotas, and I'm not sure where he's at. He's all over the place. And uh, we're excited about the doctor's clinic call, and he's going to be jumping on here and, and helping us with a topic that is probably the number one thing that doctors have to deal with when their patients come in. And I've talked to several docs that just, you know, even family practitioners, and the number one problem they have is, is inflammation, swelling, pain. And, and a lot of pain is because of some sort, some type of inflammation in your body. A lot of it is self-induced, all the way from diet to lack of nutrition, and um, and then you know the body getting jammed. It's 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 uh, there because of toxins and and toxicity. It's you know a lifestyle, you know lack of exercise. There's a lot of things that can that can uh, cause inflammation. And there's a lot of things you can do to help relieve inf inflammation. And we're going to get into that tonight. And we welcome you to the doctor's clinic where the world is your waiting room. And we wait no longer. Dr. Kurt Fisnick, he is in the house. Doc, welcome to the call. Talk to us about some inflammation, brother. I'm anxious to, to hear your insights and wisdom. Well, D.W., thanks for being the host of the call every week. I really appreciate that. And, and uh, <clears throat> I, really, <clears throat> I really wish I would come up. I would have been the one that came up with the tagline, where the world is your waiting room. I just love that. Thanks for coming up with that. And uh, so, brother, you're anyhow, amazing. we love you, buddy. It, it's the first of November, the year 2016, and and really, I mean, you you can never have this day over again. So I hope everybody had a great day. For those of you that are listening to the recording, hope you had a great day yesterday or tomorrow, whenever it happens to be. Uh, my name is Dr. Kurt Fisnick, and everybody just calls me Doc Fizz, and 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 the reason they do that is because it just sounds so cool, right? I mean, that's, that's really how they came up with it. But, no, I'm a real doctor. Um, I've been a chiropractor for about 30 years, and, and I can, I can, I'm one of those guys that honestly can say that I've never had a bad day of practice or going to work. And, and, and really, when you hear somebody say the practice of medicine, it really is practice because we have to learn every single day. And I, I believe that the day that you stop learning is when you allow your brain cells to start to degenerate. And so if you can stimulate neurogenesis, you can slow the aging process. If you can stimulate new brain cells to grow, I don't care what age you are. You can be, you know, 20, you can be 30, you can be 85. It doesn't matter. Um, you're you're, you're going to slow the aging process if you learn something new every day. So by being here, you're making a move to keeping yourself healthier. You're making a move to longevity. And, and I really want to thank you for being, being part of that revolution. Um, I graduated from chiropractic college, you know, just about 30 years ago, and I thought that I really had the ammunition to help everybody. I knew that the, the, the disease process was um, um, something that we could, we could help. And, you know, I knew that it wasn't because we didn't have enough man-made chemicals or, or what we would call uh, drugs or pharmaceuticals. I knew it wasn't because we didn't have enough of them. And, and I just thought that, hey, the biomechanical nerve interference, this thing we called subluxation, was a, was a major component of disease and illness. And if I got rid of it, I could help everybody out. But as I gained knowledge into my practice, I learned that it wasn't everything. And, and that everything works together in a way that if you don't fix every component, you're going to be left with some uh, residual disease problems. And I learned through the growth of, of the years of my practice that the most common form of treatment for disease actually slowed down the healing of the disease, and simply we call it iatrogenic disease, which means that it's a disease that was induced by the physician, whether it was from drugs or surgery or side effects of the treatment or both. But I, I knew that to be the most effective doctor, I needed to learn how to, to work with that as well. And, and that's kind of what got me moving on to where, where I am now, and I got into this branch of medicine that uh, I, I really, uh, it's called age reversal. And it's gotten to be my passion. You know, it's not anti-aging because when we say anti-anything, it means not. And if you're not aging, it means you're dying. And so we can't call it anti-aging. we got to call it age reversal. And that's what really brought me uh, here. And DW and I have gotten to be friends, and we're here every Tuesday night, uh, bringing to you information about how you can live healthy for a long, long time. And we primarily uh, focus on, you know, the products that we have with Sizzle because, you know, I guess, you know, as, as we look at this, 
in my opinion, the products that we have here, the formulations that the Mowers come up with are some of the best nutritional formulations, thus making it probably the best nutritional company that I've ever seen. So tonight's topic is on inflammation. And I was thinking this morning as I was deciding, you know, what am I going to talk about tonight? What am I going to talk about? And DW and I, we don't, we don't talk about this during the week. and We don't come up with a big discussion. You know, what's going to be the next topic of discussion? Um, usually Tuesday morning, usually by noon, I've come up with a topic, and, and then I, I sit down and I do a little bit of research because I want to have um, the information, uh, or I want to have the information right there in front of me. But 20 years ago, maybe a little longer than that, I went to I went to an educational seminar, and it was called Hearts on Fire, and 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 it was a, a seminar obviously on heart health. And bottom line, what they said was is that the major cause of heart disease was inflammation. And that was 20 years ago, and now I can tell you in the peer-reviewed medical journals today, they're talking about inflammation being the cause of heart disease, inflammation being the cause of, of, of cancer, inflammation being the cause of, of Alzheimer's and dementia and Parkinson's and all these different things. And so you start thinking about, what, what we learned, what, what we read up on 20, 25 years ago is finally hitting the mainstream. Um, the gentleman that taught me uh, had studied under Linus Pauling. Uh, Linus Pauling, as you know, had done a lot of the work on vitamin C and actually was awarded the Nobel Prize not just once but twice because of, of the work they'd done, real work. He didn't just get awarded it because he was a nice guy. So... Um, the, the real part of tonight's call, let me, let me ask you this question and think about it. <clears throat> if inflammation is bad, can it be good? I mean, why would we have inflammation going on in our body? Why would we have something that happens if it's bad? So inflammation really is the body's attempt to protect itself. The aim of, of inflammation is to remove harmful stimuli, including the damaged cells, the irritants, the pathogens, and to allow the body to begin the healing process. So it's a normal, healthy biologic response to something that's not healthy. When you catch a cold, you get inflammation. When you sprain your ankle, you have inflammation. Your immune switch system switches this gear in, into, into high speed, and the infection or the injury triggers a chain of events that's called an inflammatory cascade. And it, the familiar signs of normal inflammation, it, the area gets hot, it gets painful, there's redness, there's swelling. And uh, that's the first signal is that your immune system is really, really being caused into, into action. And, and so, like I said, I went to an educational seminar that was called Hearts on Fire. And so uh, plague or plaque in the, in the coronary artery um, is, triggers uh, inflammation. Scientists from Stanford University said that uh, 25 new genetic regions are linked to coronary artery disease. And they found that the people with coronary artery disease, the leading cause of death globally, are most likely uh, predisposed to disease because they have gene variants that are linked to chronic inflammation. So I want to say that again. People who die from heart disease usually have problems with their genetics where they get chronic inflammation too easily. I'm going to say that again. People who have chronic heart disease and die from heart disease have problems with their genetics that are linked to inflammation. So it's very serious. It's the number one cause of death. So what, what, what are we going to talk about? Well, our bodies just really weren't designed to accept this daily barrage of toxins, infectious agents, and stress. And, uh, and our, our body um, needs a lot of support to maintain the immune system to make it so it's resilient. Our modern fast-paced lifestyle doesn't give us much room if, uh, if, 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 if we pay attention to what's going on. Take a look at what we breathe. Toxic air, 
Take a look at what we eat, toxic food. Take a look at what we drink, toxic water. I mean, if you're paying attention to what's going on in the world, I mean, they're saying that, that here in the United States, we can't drink, take a drink out of any pond, any river, or any stream anywhere in the United States, in fact, anywhere in the world, without having mercury levels that are too high. I mean, you go up to the, where I live up here in, in the pristine area of Minnesota, north of Minnesota here, where you've got the boundary waters, they can't drink out of those streams because it has high levels of mercury. And all of these things cause either a pro-inflammatory pro effect or it causes an anti-inflammatory effect. And so we have to take a look at that. Unfortunately for most of us, these factors are heavily weighted toward inflammation, not anti-inflammation. So, so we're, we're, we're all, we're all kind of being geared up for this. And you hear me talk about stress. If you go to the com and you take a look, you're going to find that DW and I have talked a lot about stress over the course of last year. DW, do you realize that we've been doing this for a year now? It doesn't seem like it, buddy. It just seems like we're just getting started. Oh, we, we have, I mean, it's not like we have to go looking for topics. They're right there. All i got to do is turn the news on. There's the topic for next week just by watching tonight's news. But <clears throat> So there's a lot of research that's going on right now that's linking depression and stress to a rise in the inflammatory markers such as the C-reactive protein that you hear about. When you go to your doctor now, when they do your once a year physical, they're measuring your C-reactive protein. Well, did you know that that's linked to depression? And they say that 50% that of us in the United States, I mean, look around, if you look to your left and your right, um, you know, you're gonna see one in, in two people that you're, that you're looking at is, has depression that signals an increased risk for atherosclerosis and coronary heart disease. There was one study that I was reading about today that showed that being depressed increases the odds of developing coronary heart disease by 50%. I mean, think about that. And, and, and if you've paid attention to the news recently, if you watch the news, we have lots of reason to be, de be depressed and anxious, right? The media feeds us all this bad news all the time. If I turn the news on tonight, they're going to have 90% bad stories, one good one. How can you not feel depressed and nervous? And so that increases your risk of heart disease by 50% just from turning the news on. I mean, wow. So this call is something that everybody needs to hear. So... Chronic inflammation is hazardous to your health, and acute inflammation is something that maybe you don't really need to worry about. So what's the difference? Well, acute inflammation, that's something that ebbs and flows as needed, um, and it's, it signifies that your immune system is working the way that it's supposed to. Inflammation is a natural process. It starts rapidly, and it can, it can become severe real quickly. It can be present for a couple of days, but other times it can go on for weeks and weeks and weeks. If I, if, I, if I sprain my ankle when I'm out walking around uh, hunting, I'm going to get some inflammation. And then what happens is, is that, that that body will take care of it. You think about some, some diseases that are uh, associated with acute inflammation, acute bronchitis, an ingrown toenail, sore throat from a cold or a flu, a scratch on the skin, um, intense exercise, you know, intense exercise can cause inflammation, acute appendicitis, dermatitis, you know, something irritates your skin, acute tonsillitis, you know, you get a sore throat, acute sinusitis, now if, if, if somebody strikes me in the arm, hits me in the arm, it causes some inflammation, and what happens is the body just quickly gets rid of that stuff, and it goes away, no problem. But here's a list of some things that are low-grade chronic inflammation. All of a sudden, you start to get these body aches and pains. You start to get congestion. You start, to get, start getting frequent in infections. You start getting diarrhea, dry eyes, indigestion, shortness of breath, outbreaks of skin problems, swelling, stiffness, weight gain, and obesity, right? So when inflammation doesn't go away, now all of a sudden it's known as chronic 
or systemic inflammation. It's no, it's no longer a pro-healing response, but rather a symptom that means something's gone wrong. It can last for years, and, and it can result from failure of the body to be able to get rid of whatever caused the acute inflammation, toxicity. It can be an autoimmune response to a self-antigen where the immune system attacks its own healthy tissues, mistaking them for harmful pathogens. Again, toxicity, start thinking toxicity, right? It could be a chronic irritant of low intensity that persists forever. It could be toxicity. Examples of diseases and conditions with chronic inflammation, asthma, peptic ulcers, tuberculosis, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic periodontitis, colitis, Crohn's disease, chronic sinus problems, hepatitis. And I go on and on and on. But earlier you heard me just a, a, a little bit ago say that obesity and weight gain. Well, obesity may actually be a low-grade systemic, chronic, you know, inflammatory disease. They found that with overweight and obese children and adults, they have elevated levels of C-reactive protein. Remember that protein that we talked about that you go in, you do your annual physical, right? So they're finding that that's elevated in people with inflammation. Interleukin-6, tissue uh, uh, tumor necrosis factor, leptin, which are all known markers of inflammation, and closely associated with cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular causes of death. This means, that, and might explain why there's an increase of a risk of diabetes, heart disease, and other chronic diseases in people who are obese and overweight, right? And so maybe the inflammation is part of the problem that's causing the obesity and it's triggering these other things. So bottom line is, is that when you're overweight, when you're obese, you're feeding the fat cells, and what they're doing is they're turning around and making you sick. They're making you sick. The fat cells are just doing what they're supposed to do, which is to store energy, but they're reacting in a negative way because there's too much of it. I mean, think about that. And, and, and so when I was reading that, it was like one of those holy cow factors. I'm going, man, that's, that's interesting. Maybe that's why I'm overweight and I have a hard time getting rid of the weight is because I've got some chronic unchecked inflammation somewhere. And so now they're saying that unchecked inflammation is responsible for cardiovascular disease and cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, all your arthritis, all these different kinds of lung disease, all these different things. And so the elderly, as you get old, they're especially vulnerable to unchecked inflammation because the body loses its ability to downregulate inflammation with age. But you don't have to be old to have chronic inflammation. You don't have to be old. You can be a young child. You can be a teenager, right? But what if you don't know until it's too late? So in recent years, the conventional medicine has found or suspected that there's many disorders and diseases that are actually caused by pathogens, right? They didn't suspect this before. So now all of a sudden, they're saying that circulation, heart disease, Parkinson's, lupus, MS, are caused by these different kinds of uh, bacteria. Some of them are rather common bacteria that appear to get out of control. And they're saying even, even diseases like chlamydia and giardia, Lyme disease, the spirochete that causes Lyme's disease, mycoplasmas, all these things are being investigated to being the cause of other chronic disorders. So as we look at this and we start thinking about what we have with, with our company, with Sizzle, we've got some great, great products, and I know that the DW is going to cover that, but there's another route for inflammation is that when our bodies are insulin resistant, our brains become more leptin resistant. The more body fat we have, the more leptin we have, which triggers the immune cells in our body to release, release the tr tumor necrosis factor, which usually is a good thing 
because it consumes up tumors, but because of the way that it came in, because of insulin resistance, all of a sudden it's highly inflammatory, and that sets up a, a cascade of events that cause MS, arthritis, cancer, and heart disease. So we can have this, this insulin resistance and all of a sudden trigger cancer and heart disease from it. And I just look at that and I go, wow. I mean, this kind of thing, it just amazes me. And then, and then all of a sudden you got immune cells in the gut that what they do is they release messenger proteins that call for more immune cells to come into the battlefield and go to work. Well, when you get too many messenger proteins that recruit too many immune cells, what it's going to do is it's going to devastate the body's own tissue and it's going to cause a bad balance between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, and it's going to trigger even more inflammation. So you can see all of a sudden we're starting to get this, this, this cycle of things happening, and, and the inflammation causes more inflammation. The more inflammation causes this, causes that. I mean, let's like take a look at like even just a chronic bladder infection. If somebody has a bladder infection and it's, they, they have it over and over and over again, pretty soon they're going to have inflammation, of the cells of the bladder, and that's going to cause a risk of squamous cell bladder cancer. And, and it's because of the rapid out-of-control growth, and they're saying that what happens is that there's enzymes that prevent the knitting, the healing, and repairing of the cells, and all of a sudden it's a rapid doubling of cells, and that's what we call cancer. And so... Tonight, I started out, part of the things I said when I started out the call is that inflammation is a normal bodily function. It's not always bad. It's when the lymphatic or the immune system springs into action. It triggers the army of white blood cells to go to the area of concern via increased blood flow. That's good, but it happens over and over again. Chronic inflammation can set in, and that's really not all that good. And so what happens is, is that we start looking at our diet, and I'm looking at the time, and I'm just going, holy cow, i got a lot of stuff that I want to cover. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit here and just say that when attacking inflammation, inflammatory diseases, right at their source, we want to look at foods that are high in antioxidants, high in minerals, and essential fatty acids. So I listed just a, a few, you know, a dozen or so good things that you can eat in your diet because everybody likes to know what can I do that I normally do anyhow. Green leafy vegetables, high in antioxidants, high in vitamins that reduce inflammation. Bok choy, it's a, it's, a, it's a vegetable you can buy in the grocery store. It's high in antioxidants and phenolic substances that reduce inflammation. Celery lowers blood pressure, inflammation, helps with healthy cholesterol. Red beet, red beet extracts, you know, again, what product do we have that? It inhibits the enzymes which trigger inflammation. Broccoli has a, a, just a, a plethora of, of nutrients that, that lower inflammation actually help stop cancer growth. Blueberries have guesertin, pterostilbenes, which fight cancer and inflammation. Pay attention to that one, pterostilbean, blueberry. We're going to be hearing more and more about that. Tom, Tom is actually adding that to at least one product, maybe more than one. Pineapples, they have bromelain, which helps prevent blood plates from sticking together, which causes strokes and heart disease. It's been used for an anti-inflammatory for years. Fish oils, high in omega-3s. Um, walnuts, high in omega-3s. Chia seeds, high in omega-3s. Flax seeds, high in omega-3s and phyto phytonutrients. Uh, uh, turmeric, which is found in curcumin, is found to be more effective than any of the over-the-counter medications for inflammation, better than aspirin, better than Tylenol, better than acetaminophen. Plus, it won't cause any uh, kidney or liver disease, right? Wow. Um, I was listening to a, to a recording today, and <clears throat> they were talking about how back in, in, the, in, the, in the days of, of, of the Bible, they're saying that when, when, the, when they brought the, uh, when the three wise men brought the gold, the um the the the, the um, um oh help me out here DW <clears throat> um, when when they brought that to when Jesus was born they're saying the gold wasn't the gold metal that a lot of people think it was it was actually the golden spice yeah you've got myrrh that they brought and 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 some yeah. of the spices.
frankincense and yeah, myrrh. Frankincense. Yeah, and they're saying they're saying that the gold probably wasn't the gold metal. It was probably the golden spice. That's what they're saying now. And because it's been used for years, think about that, DW. With your background, I mean, isn't that amazing? And so all these, all these foods are so good for you, anti-inflammatory foods. And so what foods do you want to get rid of? You want to get rid of the foods that, that are saturated in trans fats. They're found in processed foods. They trigger inflammation. They increase the risk of obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. They, say, they, they seem, tend to be higher in the wrong fats. And if you don't have a balance, you, you, can't, you, can't, uh, you can't stay healthy. A University of Maryland Medical Center study said that the typical American diet has 14 to 25 times more omega-6 than omega-3. Those two need to be in balance. Refined sugars and carbohydrates cause inflammation. We need to, we need to start using um, the, the, the whole foods, the way that, 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 that God gave it to us. And, and so I'm looking here and... I want to give DW some time to go over the, the products that we have with Sizzle that will get rid of this inflammation. DW, I mean, I just love talking about this. I've got like six or seven more pages that I can talk about, but I'm going to hand it over to you. All right, everybody. Dr. Kurt, we appreciate that so much. One thing that we want to talk about when it comes to inflammation is hydration, getting hydrated, having the proper amount of water, even your brain. Um, can swell with pain, and actually, it kind of de it really doesn't swell. It shrinks, um, and so it's a, it's like it, it's still inflamed, but it's a different kind of inflammation. Um, it's almost like would, if you'd see it, you'd see a shrinking, which means it's squeezing down on things it shouldn't. It needs to be hydrated. It has a lot. Of, it needs to be it needs to be hydrated with water. So, our our diatomic hydrogen water system is the bomb daily bomb when it comes to getting your joints and your muscles and and hydration is a huge key uh, uh, to that now get into just a, just the, the simple products one of the things we love people to start with is to help with the inflammation to help with circulation to help with with building up your immune system so inflammation doesn't come in the form of uh, free radicals which go crazy and, and you have a cascade of cells that that just bundle up and, and, and do massive bundles and cause damage there. We love the phacoidin. It is a game changer when it comes to inflammation and circulation. Um, it's it just absolutely fantastic. Another one that we want to mention that has been a, a tremendous blessing to me and when you reach for an Aleve or you reach for an Advil or you reach for a Tylenol, and if you've read Tom's new stuff on, um, that he's put out about, about taking Tylenol and other things like that uh, on Facebook, uh, you can go there and do a little research and find it. However, you know, if you have to think you have to reach for one of those, reach for a product called Renovator. And Renovator is fantastic for those of you that are that, that got sore muscles, sore joints, the, the whole You've got pain through your body, pain in your head. You know, you want to possibly do the Renovator. And uh, in your Renovator, you require you the, the, for a day. And some people can do, you know, four at night, right before they go to bed, along with a half an ounce of phacoidin, and wake up feeling pretty good and get one of the best night sleeps you can possibly have. You take some calcium K2, which is another thing that helps with inflammation as well. And uh, when, you're, when your body's lacking calcium, things will swell up. And, and um, you know, so feeding it the calcium, you don't want to have, you don't want to have bone pain and, and, and joint pain. You want, the, you want your calcium uh, to, to have uh, nutrition in your, in your system. And so you, that, those are a couple areas. When we talk about the water and we talk about calcium, most people don't think of those two. Um, but they're a big heavy hitter, and, and Doc can you know, back me up on that as well. And so... Um, one thing you want to talk about is that we want to jump into is um, you know you, you you get into something that's going to help you with the with the inflammation. I want to say one more thing about Renovator is this is is this. I'm looking at my notes here real quick, so I wanted to make sure I covered everything. But the one thing about the renovator is, is you can't take that as you feel a pain come on. And so that's a big deal. Super Omega Plus, with the fish oils that are in them and the nutrition for the heart, 
you know, having your heart, having the nutrition, that is another game changer. You don't want your heart getting inflamed. You don't want your heart to, to, to literally, honestly, sincerely skip a beat. And, uh, you know, you want that thing, to, that thing to be moving proper. And so when you take the Omega Pluses also, those fish oils, they will come in and literally just, I don't want to say grease the joints, but it's kind of like that. And so, you know, it, it's, it's a big deal when it, when it helps with that. And back to Renovator again, it has some components. It used to be Renovator and Remediator. We had two different products. Tom merged them together. And there are some people that their doctors are, are, are giving, giving uh, case study reports back that the little tissues in the joints are being restored, rejuvenated, and, um, and, and we're, seeing, we're seeing some great results there. People that had to use canes and go through challenges like that, case studies are coming out to where they're, where they're uh, you know, not having to use their canes or their walkers and stuff because of, of the regiment that we're giving you here tonight. Another thing that you want to keep keep an eye on, now Super Omega Plus, it has them all in there. We don't have time. Matter of fact, Doc, you know what we do? We need to plan a call to where we just we go over several products and we talk about key ingredients in each one and, and why those would really, really help people in some areas. But eternity is, is a big deal. When, you, when you're talking about eternity and, and helping with the circulation of the body, and that's, you know, and, and that's, a, you know, that's another reason that your Omega Plus is going to help. It's going to strengthen the heart. And uh, when it strengthens the heart muscle, the heart can push, push the, uh, blood, which pushes oxygen, you know, to, to the extremities, you know, your toes, your fingers, your eyes, those areas as well. Well, that's where a lot of inflammation is, you know. And, and there's some people that you got to find out if your son's sensitive. In Colorado, we highly recommend everybody wear sunglasses around the sun because you're closer to the sun. It zaps your eyes at a little bit different level than it, than it does other people's. Spectrumax is one of my favorites for inflammation circulation. It has 74 trace minerals in it, essential, which means they're non-negotiable. The Spectrumax has 40 major antioxidants, which helps with inflammation and gets toxins out of your body. That is absolutely um, a game changer. So those are some things that's going to help you, you know, with some of the inflammation going on in your body, whether it be the brain, whether it be the heart, whether it be the bones, whether it be the muscles. And one thing that we're, when we're talking about inflammation of muscles and, you know, we talk about, and, and sometimes you'll have spastic inflammation. In other words, you might have, you might be cramping up at night and, and uh, you know, in going through cramps in the calf and stuff. That's where you want to, that's where you want to throw your calcium in and make sure you're having your sizzling shake once a day or, or, or taking some extra calcium at night in the morning. Another thing that helps with, with the gut so that when inflammation takes place in the gut because you have an allergic reaction to some food that you, you've eaten or maybe there's irritation in there, you can, you can actually, actually, you can, um, you know, you'll, you'll do our, our, our balance D, which is, which is a game changer as well. But on top of that, you're going through acid reflux, and you're going through those kind of challenges. We've had a lot of case studies where people are, uh, you know, have used the, uh, uh, you know, the, the Terminator and have taken a half, half a cap and swallowed it. 30 minutes later, maybe another half a cap, and, and it begins to heal the inner parts of, of the thing. So inflammation can, become, can, can be isolated to where there's irritation. You, you know, some inflammation can be involved because there's infection taking place and your body's fighting off an infection or where there's a... Uh, you know, a, a whole bunch of clusters of cells that are causing some damage. And so there's a lot that goes on. And so we love to start with hydration. We love then to move to the, to the phacoidin and do it for three or four days and then I'll add on the others as, as needed. Two other areas that help with building up your immune system so that you don't have an, uh, inflammation coming from infections and stuff is a product called Body Shield and another product called Influence. Right now, tonight, before you go to bed, you need to order. Make sure you've got plenty of influence on hand. And just take that between now and the uh, end of the year and, and even on into the spring if you can. And that's going to make a big difference on when colds and flus and junks are flying around. Because you talk about inflammation of the sinuses. Are you kidding me? That's massive pain. And some of that, some of that stuff, can uh, you know, we can head it off at the pass just by, just by building up your immune system with, with, uh, with some of these real simple products. Also, you can take the Terminator and put it into a mister, 
get a saline a saline solution, a bottle that they do, they spray up the nose, and you dump the saline solution out of there, and, and you get um, and you put the terminator and missed it. So those are have inflammation of the sinuses and stuff. And and I know I talked about so many different things that even Doc mentioned because uh, there's like he said, there's pages and pages of notes, and we can break this down. I mean, some people have their eyeballs get inflamed and they swell up and causing all kinds of pains and problems because of allergies and and um in in other kind of challenges and dry eyes and it goes on and on and on and that's not fun when your eyes get all irritated and swelled up or they're real puffy above and below the eyes that's not normal that that's an indicator that something's going on and so you're you're going to want to get um you know maybe a second opinion on what's happening there so doc was that was was there some wisdom in what we're talking about right there my friend you bet, man. You covered it. Um, it's just so it, – it, when you start realizing how bad inflammation can, can be to your health, you really got to start paying attention to this stuff. That's, that's the message. All right, everybody. That's it for the Doctor's Clinic, and we appreciate uh, all that's happening there. Rob Cohan helps so much. And, Rob, we love you, man, and he usually closes the call out for us. We'll have him do that in a minute. Miss Helen helps do some things as well, make sure that we get uh, get the recording going and, and so forth. But that's it for the Doctor's Clinic tonight. You're going to want to get this out. We touched on some really good products. We'll kind of evaluate. when. And, and Doc, we may want to take some things and, and, and start talking about some specific ingredients and then our products that have those in it that's going to help people. But that is it. The, just keep in mind, the world is your waiting room. They're waiting on you to bring Sizzle products in there to where you can start your own case studies with somebody and find out where they're at and what's going on and how they can be helped. And Dr. Kurt, we appreciate you. Rob Cohan, you, Miss Helen, and all the work that you do. And then the entire Doctor Clinic staff is absolutely amazing. All right, blessings, everybody. That's it. Next week, same time, same place. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Have a good one.